we be back. And we have Monique with us. She is joining us tonight. She's going to talk about um, her journey for eating plants, why she eats plants, how she eats plants. She used our word vegan-ish, which made me laugh, so that's yeah. cool. It's a good one. I'm kind of like also Jewish, right? Oh, so you're not I'm Jewish, not Jewish. I'm Jewish-ish. That's <laughs> funny. Um, yeah. We did. We pulled out some food, so I'll tell you about that. We're going to wait. Um, we have some shepherd's pie that's there on her plate. We also have the, um, I told you guys and I posted the video, I posted the recipe over the weekend. This is quinoa stew. It was supposed to be soup. I told you this morning I fail at making soup. So it's stew. And then there's a little bit of the pasta left that Russ made over the weekend that I'm going to be eating. So that's what we have sitting out here. But we've decided we're not going to heat it and then eat while we're talking to you. We're going to talk first and then we'll heat it and then Make we'll go jealous. sit at the table right. like normal humans. Which is really tough because Russ and I have been fasting today and I'd really like to eat because I'm hungry. But anyway, so do tell us, tell us, like, why, why are you a plant eater? It happened almost by accident. So, um, oh gosh, this was probably about eight years ago. I had a friend and we were into cooking and he would work out with me and that was my day job, but that was not his profession at all. And we were always just, you know, doing things together saying, okay, let's try this for a few weeks. You know, mm -hmm. let's do these workouts for a few weeks or let's run more. And one day we decided we were going to do a, a, our own version of a detox. Okay. Meaning, because I don't believe in that word. I, I mean, yeah, if, you, if you actually know any science, um, and I exist in some of the yoga circles, and there's so much pseudoscience and so much relying a little too much on touchy-feely. So I like to say I'm sort of in the middle. You're, yeah. you're really kind of on the one end of the spectrum. Right. And I kind of don't work on the ends of a spectrum. I'm always sort of right in the middle. Mm -hmm. But we decided to do... Um, a few days of just, uh, at the time I was eating like a lot of like lunch meat, like oh, turkey oh, sandwiches, yeah. because it was just convenient it's and we were lazy, yeah. and he worked at a brouhaha, and I was always there, and it was always like, okay, hey, this food. one, we're going to throw this one out, I want this free sandwich. Right. Um, so I, we started doing just um, being as whole food as we could, which meant no meats, and then we went into like a few days of just juices, smoothies, and soups. Just to try to give our digestion and break. everything yeah. a break. And then we kind of backed our way back out. And around that time, I started watching documentaries. But they were more the ones that are... The more you learn, the harder it is, right? It is. And they were the more the harrowing ones, the ones that are advocating for veganism for that it's reason. It's a political statement. <laughs> yeah, but some of them were also the, the ones that you guys have mentioned. So um, things like What the Health. Oh, well, that one's newer. Um, um, I read Joel Furman's book. Uh, those were sort of the, the first entrees into it. And then I realized after a few weeks after that, that I had kind of cut these foods out and never really wanted them again. Oh. That was the thing. I, yeah. I recognized that I could run faster. I could run for longer. I could do the things I already did, but I didn't have muscle soreness after my workouts. And especially with dairy, I realized I hadn't bought milk in however many weeks. Right. And I had when I was growing up, my mom couldn't keep milk in the house. Us too, yeah. Because we I, way, I, would, yeah. I could go through a gallon in a couple of days, and it was just me. Yeah. Um, and I realized I hadn't physically lost any weight. I hadn't lost any actual weight, but my, my clothes were fitting more differently. And I had always had sort of joint aches. When I was a kid, they used to always say, oh, it's just growing pains. Growing pains, right. Um, I felt less achy and less bloaty. Okay. And for me, whenever I have dairy, even just like, oh, I'm going to have it today. Oh, no problem. I get um, headaches. Oh, I'll really? get headachey okay. or just, just more just feeling not well. Do you feel better eating plants? Absolutely. Feel better eating plants, but... For me, the real transition started when I started noticing just my performance improve, and I hadn't changed anything else. As an else. athlete? Yeah. Okay. And, and I, don't, I, I don't consider myself an athlete in the way that you've obviously been an athlete. I never really played a sport, but um, the not feeling sore, the feeling like you could go back and push just as hard the next day. And at the time I was training, I had been doing half marathons, and I started transitioning to being more barefoot and minimalist. And, understanding a little bit more of kind of the physics of movement um, and it kind of all happened around the same time slowly but surely I just started eliminating certain things and for me it's never been about okay this is what the research shows which is a good way to start right but it's does that work for me right does this feel good and when I don't do this how do I feel what percentage do you think you are? Because I know you said you're vegan-ish. I'd say I'm probably now 80-20. I was strict vegan for a number of years, 
And when I say strict vegan, I mean when I could control food myself. Okay. So for instance, I don't believe that anyone who has a viewpoint or a way of being, if you lord it over people and try to force them into doing it, yeah, right. it's Doesn't not going to help. Yeah. And I went through cycles of that. Did um, you? Yeah. Yeah. I went through because I wasn't, yeah. you know, I'm a professional in the wellness and health field. So, you know, you want to help a person and you know that maybe they're doing something that's harmful for themselves. So you start getting a little authoritative Preachy. about it. Preachy. Right. Preachy. Right. Preachy's yep. a good one. Yep. Yeah. Um, but uh, for me, it really was, if I was out to dinner and I ordered something like a salad that had cheese on it and I told them, please don't put any cheese and the cheese still came, I'd just shove it off to the side. Whatever. Or I was out one time with a friend and it was this, this one restaurant was really known for their chicken soup. And he said, you have to taste this. I tasted it because right. it's more about how can we share in the experience and enjoy our, our food together right. um, that matters more to me. And that's what we try to explain uh, on our Facebook lives and in general is that it's, we don't ever want to go to someone's house and say, thou shalt cook for us the way we want to be fed. <laughs> that's so not cool. So that's another thing I think you and I chatted about briefly a few weeks ago. Um, the, the dealing with other people in your life stuff when you mm -hmm. start making these changes. You know, especially, for instance, being in the fitness world. Everyone, for years, I was used to eating six meals a day, and you want to make sure you're heavy on the protein, and you get so much concern or aggression from people about what you're doing. It's just that doesn't make sense. It's not right. And I find that whenever you make a change, you're, you're knocking against other people's comfort. Right. And so going to other people's houses, a lot of times they'll say, well, what am I going to make for you? You're going to make whatever you're gonna you make. You're going to make whatever you're making. I'm just going to take a bigger portion of the stuff people consider sides. Right. right. Exactly. Which, frankly, you guys were talking in one of the videos from the last few days about saving more money. You're actually spending less money. Yeah. Yeah. When I go out to dinner with friends and th there isn't a lot of stuff on the main menu, I always look right to the sides and I'll say, oh, yeah, I'm going to have the sautéed spinach and the mushrooms. And I end up getting these, like, plates that take up the table and I have to kind of say, all right, I'm going to put some of this stuff on one plate and send this plate back because I'm getting more food than everyone else and my bill is a fraction of the cost. Right. right. So, um, but, and if, but if you order, I know, you, I think you saw this video too, if you order vegan or vegetarian, you get these itty bitty little pieces like, yeah. no, feed me more than that. <laughs> yeah. And this goes back to, um, it's Mark Bittman. I think who talks about this. There's a really great podcast. I'll send it to you okay. that he did um, on NPR. And it was after he had produced a book that was called how to cook anything. Mm. But he's one of these guys who talks about, you know, eat mostly plants and, and looks at how the landscape of food changed, especially in this country as women went into the workforce and, you know, it was about convenience and we went into mm -hmm. the phase of, your parents, you know, cooking vegetables to within an inch of their life that had no flavor. They're all gray. Yeah. And um, so the beauty of that is he kind of um, explains that we really started subsidizing the meat industry. Mm -hmm. So we had to somehow literally shove this down people's throats. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's how our plates became meat heavy. And then all of the grains and vegetables as sort of the uh, um, accessories. Yeah, definitely send that to me. I'd be very interested. Yeah. And then when you, when you really look at all of that, Ideally, what you're having is the most nutrient dense first, right? As as you're filling your plate. And we talked this are. morning about eating starch and how important yeah. it is to eat right. starches. Yeah. So definitely. And you said something about starting to work with barley. Yeah, um, I want to I want to start adding barley to our diet. Yeah. So I need to find some recipes. Faro and kasha also can okay. be really fun grains. Growing up Jewish, um, sometimes you would get uh, if you've ever heard of a kanish. I know the I word, know. but I don't yeah. know what it means. So kanish is sort of like a, it's like a mashed potato patty. They usually okay. have like a breading and they're fried. They're oh, really cool. an indulgent, yummy food. But you could also, in some of the more like like hardcore kosher, like Jewishy restaurants, you could get a kasha kanish, which was more baked and it had a different kind of a dough around it. And kasha is a really, really hearty grain. Mm. When I used to work in a hospital and I was taking my lunch break, one of the nurses who loved to make 